is very organized and creates the list, but it's good because that's not who I am. That's not my ministry. Wait, 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 wait. Let's go back. Let's go back for a second because he said he's booking Airbnbs when he lands. So what, what, what part makes you say that he's more planful than you are? If he's like, I'll, I'll wing it when I get there. So the winging it is something that he has most definitely done as a single man by himself. Um, in a relationship, though, the list. He writes a list. And he's quiet, but he knows it's him. I will pull up my phone and show you the list. I will show you it matches me magically like i pulled you out of hat pull you out of bag from out of mag if you want that pull up in the slab and pull off with you in my lap top down win. hey welcome to travel tuesday happy hour where we interview dope people doing dope things from around the world and season three we have couples goals mm-hmm. as you can see i have an amazing guest today actually my bad not guest co-host <laughs> My man, my man, my, my, my lady, my lady, my lady. Tell us who you are. I am Jacqueline Jackson, better yeah. known as Jackie. Soon to be Benjamin. You know, you know, we're trying to make moves out here. Soon to, to be Benjamin. And we have an amazing guest today. Well, my bad, amazing couple today. Please tell us who you are and where are you guys from? Uh, Shad Hargrove, uh, Queens, New York. Okay, mm. okay. <laughs> Lena Dowdell, Aliquippa, Pennsylvania. So hold on, oh. hold on. She said Aliquippa. Aliquippa. We, got, we got Queens meet Aliquippa. This is Brooklyn meet Queens. We're just <laughs> talking about Queens and Aliquippa. How'd that happen? Um, go ahead. You got it. No, you got it. Um, ooh, what, 2016, something like that. I've lived in New York for, uh, what, like 10 or 12 years now. We met, like many of folks our age online, um, started dating. He was living in New Jersey, and we're here. Oh wow! Mm-hmm. So from Aliquippa, but Harlem resident. Mm. Okay, okay. That's so. So, what do you guys do? I am a principal of a lovely middle school in East Harlem. Oh, principal! So big time. We got big time is on the show today. <laughs> All right, and sir, uh, I'm a general manager of a QVC distribution center. Mm-hmm. Oh, okay, okay. Big Thomas, big Thomas, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Jackie. Me, what? <laughs> <laughs> All right. What do you do? So, so what do oh. I, what do you do, Jackie? I thought I was suddenly here for support. Okay, <laughs> that's fine. Um, I am the chief operations officer for the New York Urban League, and I also am the executive director of a program called the no- the Royalty Project, which um uh promotes positive self images and self esteem amongst youth of color ages 10 to 14 middle school well, it principal sounds like after this right that's my age <laughs> that's us we that's need me to make this work we need to make this work so yeah. y'all met what year again please remind uh, me again like 2016 i think 2016 no. oh. <laughs> Come on, <laughs> old is nothing but a number. You feel young at heart. You good. I do, good. but you know, when it comes to dates and times, I'm kind of like, oh. oh, yeah, that memory gets like, when was it again? So now, since the memory and all that great, and y'all seem to not remember when y'all first met. So, <laughs> when was the first trip y'all took together? Mm. Oh, so and, our- and, and on top of that, who was responsible for planning it? What? <laughs> what? All right. So tell us about that. So where did you guys go? So the first trip we took together was actually Chicago, Illinois. Nice. Nice. Mm, nice. All right. And so was there like resistance or was it like, all right, you know, she, you swept her off her feet and she was like, I'll go wherever you, you tell me. <laughs> 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 look, 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 blink twice if, like, you, if you're going to be in trouble. <laughs> right, right. No, um, she didn't get resistance. She, we were just both excited to go and explore the city together. Oh, mm. wow. Nice, nice. And what then, time of year did you go to Chicago? Because Chicago can be different at different times of the year. Yep. It was winter, so <laughs> <Yeah>. January. <laughs> January. 
Mm-hmm. It was nice. It was cold. Uh, the coldest month of the year. I mean, <laughs> but you're but you're in New York now, so you should be accustomed. And yeah, from yeah, Alabama, yeah, yeah. and I grew up in Western Pennsylvania, so you know it's cold there too. Mm-hmm. Okay, that mm-hmm. Erie Lake effect is always over there. So yeah. Chicago winter, is the same thing as Pittsburgh, right? No, that wind is different. No, it was worse. It was, worse. <laughs> but it was still a good time. It was nice. Um, he used to live in Chicago, like okay, before a little bit before I met him. So he wanted to like give me a taste of Chicago, I guess, like through his eyes. So it was really cool. So we got to do uh-huh. some things that he liked to do and visit some places that he frequented. So it was sweet. And then I have a sorority sister who lives there, so we drove past her house and. We had to chat for a little bit. So it was good. Oh, that sounds cool. So who decides on like, so this was the first trip y'all took on, right? So from that point forward, you kind of trusted him and like, all right, you're not too bad in this trip planning process. (laughs) As you guys move forward, how do you decide where to go and who's planning it? Well, if you know me, um, I'm a little bossy. So sometimes it's me deciding. <laughs> Brother, look, I'm going to take one with you. I lose it's, a happy hour. It's me okay. just deciding what to do. Um, the trip that was actually after that was one with my best friend. So we had kind of already like planned it, but it happened to be a place he really enjoyed. So he's like, hey, like maybe I'll come hang out with you guys for the weekend. We're all pretty friendly. So that's kind of how it happened. Oh, nice. But since then, as far as like planning, it's kind of been both. We'll just discuss. He's been many more places than I have ever been. So a lot of the times um, he'll suggest some places, the handful that he hasn't been um, mm-hmm. as options to consider. Um, and just kind of like I'm open to anything because there's just been so many places I haven't been. So I'm kind of like, OK, cool, let's go. What are we going to do or mm-hmm. where are we going to plan to go next? So, so logistically, do you guys share the planning process or is it based on if you're familiar with where you've been? Um, mm, good question. That is a good question. A little bit of both. So okay. um, I think if it's his idea, then I kind of just go with it completely. Like whatever he's like, okay, this is what we're going to do. This is where we're going to go. I'm like, all right, I, I trust him to make a good decision. Um, if it's something that I've chosen <laughs> and I may want to have, <laughs> I don't like this. What is this? What's that? (laughs) Um, But if it's something that I've planned or something that I've worked on, then I may suggest more things. But I don't know. I'm trying to be a little more uh, or a little less controlling about all the things. How's that? How's that coming along? (laughs) Oh. Okay. Uh, he's, we, he's zips and wings. We need you sober by the time the show is over. <laughs> <He's>, <laughs> I think that's a sign. That's how it's going. That's how it's going. <laughs> okay. Okay. So um why do you travel? If you had to answer the question of like what makes you want to travel, what gives you the inspiration to travel, um, how would you respond to that? Um, for me, it started as a child. So my family on my mother's side is originally from Hamilton, Bermuda. So Mm. when I was younger, during my winter breaks, as long as I did well in school, every winter recess, we went to Hamilton to visit family and friends. So I've been traveling at least to Bermuda as early as like five years old. Mm -hmm. Nice. Nice. So from like five to like maybe 14 or 15, went to Bermuda every single year. And then I was in the Boy Scouts uh, here in New York, and my Boy Scout troop went to St. Lucia twice, two consecutive summers. So just those two experiences, like Bermuda and St. Lucia, just completely opened my mind to exploring the world. And then um, just got the travel bug. Like I was addicted to passport stamps. (laughs) Yeah. So anywhere I can go just to have a a new experience. Like I, I might be the person to like stay at a resort or I could be the person that will like get an Airbnb like when I land. Mm. So I love I love traveling. So before you continue, um, I like the fact that Bermuda was a treat or a reward and not a punishment. That's a uh, big reward. Yeah, because yeah. as you know, some of us West Indian kids were threatened to be sent back home, um, and Bermuda seems not to be a bad place to be threatened to go back to. <laughs> so. They could have easily said, I'm going to send you to Bermuda to live with your cousins. And I, 
I would have quickly packed my bag. <laughs> okay. Um, for me, it was the opposite. As a kid, we only traveled locally. My parents chose to spend their money on my education. So like I went to a private school all my mm-hmm. life. Um, but we always went on vacation. It was just to Virginia Beach. And so when I finally was able to like make some real money outside of teaching, uh, I got my passport. And my first trip was actually with my best friend and um, one of our other co-workers to Greece. And we randomly just selected it. <laughs> I know, right? Like, how do you randomly select Greece? You put it in an app and you're just like, we're going to go there. Um, oh, we nice. got some pretty good places to stay. So it was out of just like not having the opportunity and recognizing, right? Like my parents had to choose something. And so they chose, I guess, rightfully so in education. But now I'm just interested in going as many places as possible um, and being able to share some experiences that I haven't had before. Mm-hmm. Nice, nice. So the thing that I, I like to tell people, and I appreciate you sharing that story, is because, you know, travel is travel, regardless if you're domestic or international. Yeah. And the fact that from Aliquippa, you got to go to Virginia Beach, you know, the demographics in that area, not everybody's awarded that opportunity. So I, I just want to commend you guys on being able to at least to get out because Western Pennsylvania by itself is just like, if you can get out, you get out and you stay out. <laughs> right. Um, so with that being said, like what keeps you guys moving? Like what keeps you wanting to what's that thing that keeps you traveling? Right. Like I know you've got the bug, but what is it that's like, yo, I want to go try this place? Because for me, I mean, I like to travel. I like to eat. And that's one of my motivating <laughs> factors. So. I would say for me, it's definitely food. So the other day I was on TikTok and I was scrolling and I saw someone at the state fair and I was like, babe, we need to go to Texas to the state fair. I went a few (laughs) years ago. I had a co-teacher who was from Texas. So we went on like an indigenous people's weekend. It was a long weekend and we went to the fair and it was so delicious. And so she and I used to joke all the time, like, you know, we're going to start a blog. We're going to quit teaching. We're going to travel the country eating our way through life, just two teachers Mm. eating our way through life. So definitely food. I love food and even architecture. Like I've never Mm. like formally gotten into things like that, but I love to, I think I probably get it from my mom, like sightsee and see picturesque views. And so that was definitely like the selling point when we went to Greece, like riding on the the hill to Oya and like then taking the photos. Yeah, it was great. Okay. Mm -hmm. And and where, before we continue, where in Greece did you go? Because I mean, you you clear. I clearly didn't see the Santorini cliffs, all flowy dressing, you know, on on your timeline. So where did you go particularly? Um, we did. We went to Santorini. We went to Mykonos. And we went to Athens. I am on social media, but I'm more of a lurker than a poster. <laughs> I want a handful of things, um, but I don't post too much. Well, if you didn't post, you wasn't there. Is that the case? <laughs> so they say. So they say. Okay. Okay. And sir, yourself? So for me, it's the food, but it's not the the eating I enjoy, but it's more so the process. So oh. I'd say the vast majority of places I've gone, I've had the ability to either do one of those like cooking excursions or like immersing myself like in a cooking experience, right? So um, a few years back, and I know I can't speak of the place. So Go ahead. No, no. But, it's, you got uh, it. <laughs> a few years, from January of 2019 till about July of 2019, I actually lived in South Korea. Oh, wow. Mm. So during the time that I was there, I would volunteer every Saturday or every other Saturday if I wasn't traveling somewhere else in a soup kitchen. So for me, it was me and like five other like Korean grandmothers cooking in a kitchen together. We couldn't speak the same language. They knew I had an idea of what I was doing based on how I was cutting the vegetables. So they kept giving me more, but I literally cooked for about 60 people with these five other women, not being able to communicate, but making all authentic like Korean dishes. So like for me, traveling is about like immersing myself in that culture's cuisine so that I can learn it and take something away from it. Because there's so many different flavors and smells that we've never been exposed to before. And and that's amazing because you touch on the fact how traveling for food, not necessarily just traveling for food, but experiencing immersing yourself in the culture, that's heavy. Mm-hmm. Because one of the things that uh, a lot of us aren't shown or, or taught early on is to embrace other people's cultures, right? 
um, you grew up in Queens, so you knew what the cultural differences were and, and the tension that that was held between the, all of us in the areas. And then especially in the Western Pennsylvania side, it's, it's, a, it's a blended community, but you don't see the culture as much as possible. So it's amazing that you guys have that in common um, and can actually really be able to like express how it meant to you. Mm-hmm. Jackie, mm-hmm. anything? I just want to know what their most memorable trip was together. Like, I understand your your different aspects of why you want to travel, your motivation and what keeps you traveling. But as a couple, what was your most memorable trip together? So we haven't traveled like a whole bunch of places. So I would say definitely going to Costa Rica. I love the beach. Um, It is my like Zen place. If I could live in a house by the water and like see the sunrise and the sunset, I'd be happy, my happiest self every day. Um, So I would say definitely Costa Rica, being at the beach, being able to be free uh, away from work and all those things would definitely be it for me. Yeah, Yeah, I would say the same, just because like we, we, this travel journey of ours is still relatively new. Mm -hmm. So like Mm -hmm. Chicago is just the early part of this year. Mm -hmm. So while we have like, we're going to, to DC like tomorrow as an example, Oh, um, you leave tomorrow. And then in February, we're going to uh, Dominican Republic. So the, the the journey of us beginning to travel is still it's within fresh. this year. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's dope. That's dope. And so, like, with it being so fresh, are there challenges as it relates to kind of, like, navigating this travel journey, right? Because you're in logistics, right? And then you're a principal. So, you know, when she's off, that's the most oh, expensive yeah. tickets out there, right? <laughs> um, she's, the, she's like, yes. She's the principal and she can almost tell the assistant principal, look, you got this and then take that little bit of time. Is that time. true though? So it, I, I have worked with my organization for almost eight years. And so I have earned a level of flexibility. Um, oh, that a superintendent is pretty flexible. It's funny. He actually knows, well, they don't know each other well, but like he's met him and knows that like our relationship is long distance. And so he's always like, if you need more time or you need an extra day. So he's understanding to um, the nuances of our relationship. And I appreciate that. So it's come nice. with like the principal clout, but also just having been there for a little while. Oh, good. Oh wow! So, um, so you're saying to Paige's question, scheduling is not the, is not a challenge. <laughs> um, it is because he works a lot. His industry oh, uh, is challenging. Okay. So also in those times that I'm off, so like during the holiday season, there is there is no time. So that's why we're going to DR in February. His birthday is actually next month, and it's his 40th birthday. So we're like, oh, let's do something really cool together. He likes to travel. I don't think he's been to DR. So I'm like, this will be a good time. But we, yeah. there's no way we could go next month because in the industry that he's in, if it's a holiday, then he's locked down. Right, mm. right. Yeah. So, I mean, there are some challenges, but I wouldn't say that's the biggest challenge. It's probably the way we travel. Like he is very organized and creates the list, but it's good because that's not who I am. That's not my ministry. Wait, 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 wait. Let's go back. Let's go back for a second. Because he said he's booking Airbnbs when he lands. So what, what, what part makes you say that he's more planful than you are? If he's like, I'll, I'll wing it when I get there. So the winging it is something that he is most definitely done as a single man by himself um, <laughs> in a relationship, though, the list. He writes a list. <laughs> and he's quiet, but he knows it's him. I will pull up my phone and show you the list. <laughs> <He's> <laughs> I will show you a list. Don't do that. So so let's, let's talk about this list, right? So uh, I got another list I'm going to ask you guys about, but let's talk about this list. Is this like a trip ready list uh like what to pack i, I want to yeah i want to know or what's on is the list. it like a full itinerary from <laughs> when you need to start packing to early check-in to <laughs> when you guys get there in a full itinerary it's not that bad um oh, gosh, but it is definitely it. what to bring i am a person who will pack at the last minute and by mm. last minute you know, the day before or something. What, two, Maybe. three hours before you're supposed to leave the house? You know, listen, I could be making amendments up until that time. <laughs> okay. So, so my list are just all the items you need. Okay. I mean, they're a great list, though, because 
I need, a, I'm a person who needs a list mm-hmm. outside of work. I'm very, you know, in work, I'm very organized and, you know, I run the show, but in my personal life, it's a little chaotic. And so a list is helpful. Okay. Mm-hmm. Okay. So mm-hmm. speaking of lists, right. So um, I know you guys have mentioned um, you guys got a couple of trips lined up, right. Um, do you guys um, have, have you guys talked about like a top five places to go? We have not talked about top five places. He has some places he would like to go that are on his list that we he shared with me, which is where I pulled DR from. I have like the list of like for my 40th birthday, here's what I would like to do. Okay. But we haven't necessarily shared like here's a list of places. Um, so well, well, let's share, be, why yeah, don't you share, share your yeah. top, your separate top five and let's see how many on there collide. Let's see what the similarities like, are. Top five. I don't even know if I have a top five. So the place I would love to go to next is like the Maldives. I the water over water bungalows. That's that's where I'm living. Right. Um, I would most certainly I have to put this on my list because it's actually my son's top place. He's dying to go to Egypt. He's been wanting to go there. He's seven, but he's been wanting to go there for a really, really long time. And he's like, mom, we really need to go there. And I was like, I got you. Um, I would love to do some Southeast Asia uh, my friend Jessica and my friend Danielle talk about it all the time. There are places that they've traveled. Um, South Africa is a place. I know that's on his list. Uh, that's at what, four? Um, and number five? I don't know. I don't have a, a number a number five. I'm, I'm really open. Like I said, I haven't been many places. Um, so I'm open to wherever. Okay. Uh, for me, it's going to be um, Chile, South America, uh, Cape Town, South Africa, mm-hmm. um, Russia, mm. Switzerland, oh. and um, Monterey, California. Wow. Nice list. Mm-hmm. Nice list. How did Monterey, California end up on there? Nothing question. <laughs> <laughs> She's like, what added that? So, so been to, no, so been to Monterey, California, a few times. Mm-hmm. Um, I took a road trip back in 2016 of the entire Pacific Coast Highway from north to south. So yes. started at uh, Redwood National Park and made my way all the way to San Diego. But mm-hmm. Monterey is just a little quaint town right there on the uh, Pacific Coast. It has phenomenal um, food and just really good views of the ocean. Yeah. It's we had a- the opportunity to stop there. And I tripped to, a recent trip to California where we did not the whole coast. We just did um, from Oakland down to L.A. But we stopped in Monterey. He actually had to take a call for Travel Tuesday. <laughs> you got to work, you know, season <laughs> so two. So he had the beautiful views that you were talking about in his background in the, you know, in the vi- in the video. <laughs> the show must go on, you know, <laughs> take a pit stop, make sure it works. It was perfect. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. So definitely, um, definitely one of the most beautiful places I've been in the United States. Yeah, Monterey is gorgeous. I agree. Okay. <laughs> so I want to kind of shift the topic a little bit um, to kind of like traveling while black, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, individually and then as together, like, you know, what has that experience been like for you all um, traveling? Do you take any additional safety precautions, um, any measures that you think our non-black people don't have to consider? when you travel? Yeah, well, this is a topic. He just made it sound like, "Mm," because I'm always talking about Black people stuff because, you know, I am with the Black and the brown babies all day. So that's something that I think about constantly. I do a lot of Googling. I'm always interested to know, like, how people of color are welcomed in an area if there's information, like, that's public um, or searching on travel blogs of other folks to find out more information to see if they have experienced any um, issues. It's funny that you mentioned it because when I was in Greece, I was actually with two white women and I was um, the only person of color with them. Mm-hmm. And when we were on the bus in Mykonos traveling, there were some men from the Netherlands and they were like looking at me and like making commentary. Um, but, you know, you could tell they were talking about me and yeah 
I probably, I think on the bus was probably also the only black person. Mm -hmm. Um, (laughs) It made my one friend really upset so much so that we may or may not in our New York way got into a little, you know, conversation with them about it later when we saw (laughs) them, you know, but at any rate, um, (laughs) may or may not. (laughs) (laughs) Um, but for the most part, I haven't had too many issues, right? So like that was one instance where there was some commentary and we just kind of were really direct with them about the noticing of them speaking to us. I mean, it could have probably gone another way, but like I said, as New Yorkers, we kind of told the line of what may be appropriate and inappropriate. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I often worry about those things, um, even traveling in the United States, right? Not even internationally. Something I get on him all the time about is like, make sure you let me know where you are, or where you're going to be, or where you're driving. Like, how are you getting there? Who else are you going to be with? Um, mm-hmm. So traveling anywhere while being Black is something that comes to mind um, for me and it's something that I, I worry about. Okay. Mm-hmm. Um, for me... <clears throat> For me, it's been interesting just because of all the places that I've been by myself. So I'll take like living in Korea itself was its own experience. Right. Mm -hmm. The advantage that I have of at least where my house was at was right next to one of the larger army installations in Korea. So people just everyone in that area was accustomed to seeing people that look like me because the military base was right next door. Mm -hmm. But it would be that random Ikea that I would go into three out three hours outside of Seoul city limits where there's no one at all that looks like me aside from if you turn on your television. So here I am asking for Swedish meatballs, mashed potatoes and, uh, and some ligonberry juice and people are just staring because I'm the only person there or going to a, a gym to play basketball and seeing some little kids, you know, there with their coach, and children uh, speak English very, very well there. Mm-hmm. And they were like, they, just because I was black and shooting around, they asked me if I could dunk. And I was like, no, I can't dunk. You know? <laughs> um, but then like instances of like going to Spanish speaking countries, you know, not staying at a hotel, having to meet someone randomly, like in an alley to get a key for <laughs> an Airbnb, right? Um, it's been challenging, but I just because it's important to me to like really immerse myself in those countries culture. Like my Spanish is pretty decent to be able to navigate. Um, My Korean is pretty decent to be able to navigate like at least restaurant Korean and banking Korean to be able to, to eat and get money. Uh, Mm -hmm. Picked up a little bit of Japanese during times that I've been to Tokyo. Um, So yeah, like for me, it's important to just be always mindful of my surroundings. Right. So like I have, just because I've been to like Jamaica and Costa Rica a lot. Like I have a Costa Rican SIM card, a Jamaican SIM card, right? So that I always have a cell phone that if I do need to be able to get a hold of somebody, I can easily just pick up the phone. Mm -hmm. (laughs) And so as a unit, have you guys seen, um, I I know you guys mentioned you haven't traveled a lot, but have you seen a difference in how people see you, right? Um, Perception of a woman by herself, Mm -hmm. perception of a man by himself, um, is different when they're combined because as a couple, as, as, a, as a man with a woman, you're less threatening, right? And I'm going to use air quotes. And yeah. as a woman, you're less approachable. Yeah. Air quotes, right? Um, do you guys see that or you guys really haven't gone far enough to really see where that's a difference? I would say I agree, um, especially when he was in Costa Rica with us and then when he left. So, Mm -hmm. Jessica and I are always and it's even in New York. I sit on a bench alone in New York and eight out of 10 people are going to come and look at me or say something to me like random strangers in the street will approach me about a variety of things. And so she when she and I were just together on the beach, you know, people may come over to us and try to sell things to us or just talk to us generally. But if he was there, it was kind of like, oh, never mind. Right. And so I do think that sometimes when folks see women alone, we are targets, if you will, for lack of better words, of solicitation of things or just someone wanting to talk to us generally. Whereas if I'm with him walking down the street, nobody says anything, even in my own neighborhood, someone who may stop me and say something to me. It's like I don't exist. Mm. You got You got your personal bodyguard. You know, right. what I mean? they're not they're not they're not pressed for it. <laughs> right. Right. So do you see a difference in how 
people see you when you're with her? No, I don't, honestly. Mm. Interesting. So, like, I'm going to just throw a scenario, right? You're in the street walking by yourself. Is Karen walking across the street? Or mm. is she just walking past y'all because y'all together? <laughs> it doesn't even occur to you. Right. Maybe it it. And that it might not even occur to you. You might not even think about like considering. No, like, it's been it's been a long time in the United States that Karen has has clutched her purse and walked the other way. Mm. Um, I'd say the only time that I might have seen that a handful of times was when I was in Korea, like outside, like hours outside of Seoul, you know, in countrysides where people would, because again, the only time they see people that look like me is on television. Mm-hmm. Gotcha. Gotcha. Mm-hmm. Um, okay. But no. All right. So have you ever felt unsafe anywhere where you traveled with oh, yeah. or without her? Have you ever yeah, felt absolutely. unsafe? Yeah. All the time. Um, but there's a part of me that like that puts himself sometimes in unsafe situations. <laughs> yeah, so like so like prime example. Um, I'm on like the Korean version of Craigslist and find somebody that created a post. She's already for, shaking her head. Find somebody, <laughs> find somebody that what I couldn't hear you. Sorry. <laughs> find somebody that created a post for like a, a poker tournament. Mm-hmm. So I sent him a message in like this uh, the Korean version of WhatsApp. It's called Kakao. So I sent him a message in Kakao. He gave me an address. Told me to meet him at this location. I met him at this location. It was behind some back door in the back of a convenience store. Had a full casino room in there. And uh, I played poker. I want to say I only bought in for like the U.S. equivalent of like $300. Mm-hmm. No one in the room was having the guy that invited me at the time I knew could speak English. But within a matter of, I don't know, five hours my $300 U.S. equivalent turned into like 14000 U.S. equivalent. Then the next, then the next time a poker went, shark. Then the next time I went was like an, another 10000 right. And I went the third time. And although I might have walked away with like 5000 I ended up like, you know, let, losing a little bit so they wouldn't be intimidated by me. Okay. But, like, mm. but like if at any time that place would have gotten raided, like this wouldn't even be a video um, <laughs> interview. Right? I, I would still be in the prison somewhere in school. So I need to back you at the next poker tournament. Is that what you're saying? Or they're just bad in in Seoul? No, it, it's just like I leverage the skills in poker for really being able to read body language. Mm-hmm. Like I think about body language very very well, and mm-hmm. body language does not change irregardless. Of what color of you are, culture of race, right? And it's mm-hmm. like they were very telling in all of their behaviors. Like I can, like I just sat there with my headphones on because I couldn't talk to anybody. I just listen to music the whole time I was playing. But all of them had tells that I was able to pick up on in a matter of seconds. Mm-hmm. I wow. took advantage of it. But again, I could have wow. easily been in a foreign detention center somewhere. <laughs> we're thankful for that we right. appreciate for having you on the show and <laughs> not not um streaming live from the korean <laughs> <laughs> so we're gonna move forward a little bit and i appreciate you guys openly sharing those because one of the things that I, i'm i'm trying to educate the community is that traveling while black is a thing right um it's not just a thing here and it's not always negative, right? Um, And I wanted to ask you about your travels in East Asia or Southeast Asia, right? Do you feel as though that it's out of curiosity because there's, like you said, Mm. you were the only person there for miles or, um, and I I wanna wanna bundle curiosity and ignorance at the same time. Um, Or do you feel as though that it was a dislike for black people? Because yeah, I is it know. a prejudice or is it a fascination? Because in different countries, it can be different, and it can feel different mm-hmm. when it's actually the other. Yeah, so so if I use Southeast Asia uh, specifically, right? So it kind of all depends on the age of the individuals, right? So like older, your traditional um, Koreans may 
you know, walk a little bit faster or may not necessarily speak to you. Whereas the, the younger generation, they love our culture. They love our music. They love our, our, the clothes that we wear, the sneakers that we wear, like the sneaker culture is probably just as large in Southeast Asia as it is in New York, Chicago, LA, Atlanta, right? Like they're, they're in line on sneaker release stage, just like we are in the U S. Um, but with the, the younger folks, you know, my age and younger, I would say they were just more curious, right? Like just, I would be random, as I said, randomly being in an Ikea, nowhere near any military base or just randomly on a playground, sitting, watching a baseball game outside of Seoul or randomly on uh, one of these little small boats in like um, Thailand, right? Just going to a, a floating market. Like there weren't a lot of people there that looked like me, but it was just, right. you know, taking the time to like really, like if I'm going to a produce stand um, in Vietnam, right? Like, I, although you and I can't speak the same English, I'm sitting there like asking questions. I'm on some translation apps trying to learn how to speak to you about the various fruits and things that I'm smelling to make it like a, a true experience that I'm getting out of it. So mm-hmm. like, you know, I, with the exception of the, the few instances in Korea, I've never had a bad knock on wood uh, experience. Like it's just more so big curiosity around our music, our culture and our, our clothes. Nice. Mm. Nice. Appreciate that. Cause I mean, that's something that um, gets easily misconceived by um, like you said, the curiosity. I mean, I've heard stories in, in past seasons where there's like a, a lack of consideration for personal space. And oh, so, you know, oh, that oh. And, and for people from New York. Wait, wait, he, he really space. reacted to that. How was <laughs> how, Give us <laughs> what made you react so strongly to that? Yeah. So, so there is no personal space in Korea at all. Oh, no. And they, like not even a little bit. Um, if you could imagine a New York City train packed at like 730 a.m. on a Tuesday. Imagine a Korean train with more people on it than can fit on a New York City subway. So, for example, let's say you're the one standing by the door um, and a door opens and more people get on. Well, those people that get on, instead of facing at you, they turn around and just start taking steps backwards to push you back. Oh, wow. And there's no conversation about it. So so, so it's not no, oh, excuse me, it's just... Here is floor space on the train. I, I based on my size and circumference. Just somebody else's body on yours. <laughs> so some people just literally just turn around and just walk backwards and just push you. <laughs> wow. So like the first time I got on the train, I got pushed from one door all the way across to the other <laughs> door. And I thought I was assaulted. <laughs> and, and no one even asked my permission. Like, there was no, no dialogue at all. Oh, wow. <laughs> I, I appreciate I think that. I, even, I think I even went on Facebook Live that day. <laughs> I was like, like look at holy this. crap. Look, everybody needs to see this. Although when I was on the train, everybody was going to sleep because it was, um, they're 13 hours ahead. But it was, uh, it was challenging riding the train. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It really, mm-hmm. really was. Like, people would just come up to you just because you were different and be like, oh, your hair is so not, yeah, like zero person. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> wow. All right. So we're going to, we're going to fast forward this a little bit. Um, you know, we've, we've all been in a unique situation that for, with at least within our lifetimes, we've never really experienced, experienced before, right? right? Like this pandemic, um, you know, I'm not going to, make anybody relive what they experienced, but where are you all, where are you all today? Like, how are you adjusting with um, reduced or um, ele- like lifted guidelines, um, masks, the vaccines, boosters? How are you guys adjusting life with, and especially adding travel to the mix, right? How are you guys adjusting to the new normal um, post shutdown? Oh, what is your new normal? Because you guys said you you um, been together since about 2016, so you you had been dating prior to the pandemic, moving into it, and now we're like adjusting to whatever 
we're saying as the pandemic's winding down or something like that, how, how can you explain your journey as you went from, okay, we're free to do whatever we want to, oh, we locked down, quarantine, got to stay safe, to now like, okay, we can move around a little bit. What should we do? Um, yeah, so a lot of things. Um, so I definitely, people are always like, oh, did you get vaccinated because you work at, in the school? No, I got vaccinated to travel. Um, <laughs> seriously, right? Like, because I was like, yeah. I will not be confined. Yeah. New York or wherever. So I got to get vaccinated. Cool. Sign me up. Um, it was honestly less about work. So that was one thing. So definitely got vaccinated so that I could resume travel and be free because it's something that I'm definitely passionate about. New normal. Uh, it's something I tell people all the time. As an educator, it's very stressful. Um our families, our students, they're hurting, right? The world, a lot of people are really hurting. They had their own stuff and traumas and then the traumatic experience of a pandemic on top of that. So for a new normal, it's um, trying to set some more boundaries, honestly, um, just mm. so that I can stay a little bit sane, um, which comes to, you know, when we we're talking about taking time off work. I was a person who like never took PTO days. I will take PTO days and every day in between now. Um, to make sure that I'm mentally well so that I can be well for others. And so I would say that's definitely like the biggest change I, before the pandemic. Um, I, I feel like I waited around or I waited to see things or do things, um, even though I wanted to travel and do different things. It was kind of like our, a lot of our relationship has been long distance. His career has moved him a bunch of different places. And I feel like I often waited for the opportunity for me to like maybe be wherever he was or like um, traveled somewhere because he was there or or I knew someone there. Like he lived in Atlanta for a while and one of my sorority sisters lived there. And it was one of these like in between periods like we were dating, but like not really. It was kind of like free. And I was like, oh, well, he's here. I can go hang out with him. Right. Yeah. Um, and it was more of like waiting kind of mm. um, and a little less action. So for me, the new normal is like I am very much more active in, yeah. in making a choice in the terms of like our relationship and how we travel and how we move and what that right. means. Okay. Did she speak for right. both of y'all? <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I, know, I just got deep. I just got deep. Um, he's kind of like, what do I say now? Yeah, <laughs> I don't know how to follow that. <laughs> I mean, she made it difficult to follow, but I believe in you, King. You got this. <laughs> you can do it, man. You can do it. Mm. Uh, so for me, like, I, I got vaccinated, be well, because of travel, but more so because of work. At the mm -hmm. time, the job that I worked at, uh, we had almost 4,500 people that worked there. And just with the nature of the, of the job. So at that time, I was working for Walmart or walmart.com. So anytime someone orders something online... You know, we got busy, right? And with the world shut down, everybody was trying to buy online orders, uh, <laughs> toilet paper, right? You know, and my building was full of it, as far as the eye can see. So, um, I wanted to make sure that I stayed safe so that I was able to add impact to the economy. Right? All those people that are going online buying stuff from Walmart.com, you know, one mm -hmm. out of six people would have got it from my building. So. Mm -hmm. For me, it was just important to say that, you know, I contributed some way, shape or form to like the world coming out of this by being able to provide people with the things that they needed for everyday life. But then the flip side of that is travel, right? Like I am absolutely the person pre-COVID that would just go to a ticket counter, ask for whatever the next flight that's leaving to go somewhere and just go, you know? And that's why I'm booking the Airbnb or something when I land because I didn't know where I was going before I got to the airport. Mm -hmm. So for me, um, COVID really like, you know, hindered my ability to just really get out and explore the world mm -hmm. like I wanted to. Okay. And I'm going to ask you about that ticket counter purchase as a tip, <laughs> because people don't realize these pennies, these penny saver trips that you can just go to the airport and grab tickets. So oh, really? He sounds like he knows what he's talking about. Mm -hmm. um, but um, I'm going to go back to something that you said, Lena. Um your mental space, traveling and being able to take the time off. Um, I think the pandemic gave a lot of people perspective to like, yo, I've been putting things off like my mental health for long enough. Like 
do you feel like travel helped contribute towards that? Um, and if so, like, are you seeing a difference in how when you travel and come back, like you said, you need to be the better you for the kids and your staff? Are, are you seeing a difference now than you were before? Because you weren't taking time off. <clears throat> Absolutely. Um, I am a much happier person. Like I said, if I can get to a beach um, or get to some water or get some sun. And so anytime that I have been able to step away from work um, has made it easier, even though like I take PTO day and stay in New York and I, they still bother me. It's something about like the taking myself somewhere else, even if it's just like you said, if it's even if it's sometimes just to my parents' house in Western Pennsylvania, it's Mm -hmm. the going there that is like, okay, I'm free. I can clear my mind. I can take some minutes to think. And then I come back and I'm a little bit more productive, or at least I'm a little nicer to them. (laughs) (laughs) I mean, they would say I'm nice most of the time. They really do like me, but you know, when I got to be stern, then I have to be stern. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. All right. Um, So I I really want to go, go forward with this um, travel tips. Right. As it relates to traveling, um, whether it's individually or as a couple, what are some tips that you would give some um, new new couples or just individuals looking to get in um, into traveling? Yes. I'm sorry. He had to step away for a moment. (laughs) You you the whole show. So we got this. Oh, no, it's couples goals show. Okay, she's been, you know, okay, no problem. Boss ladies Um, on the (laughs) screen. I would definitely say just do it. I think a lot of times folks get hung up in like the cost. Um, And to your point, I think maybe in another episode that I've watched, I think someone said the same thing on your show that even stateside, right, is travel. Mm -hmm. And so just like going, right, getting in your car, if you have one, hopping on a train, if you live like somewhere in New York, you know, you can hop over on the Amtrak and be in Philadelphia in two hours. Mm -hmm. Um, So like, that would be it. Just do it. Mm -hmm. That would, yeah, that would be my first tip, I suppose. Um, I would also say planning, right? Um, You can't just get up and go and be free. Like, obviously things do cost money, but some type of planning and thinking about where it is you'd want to go. is it cost effective? Um, can you go to many places? That was the best part about going to Greece is that there was that opportunity for island hopping. So, yep, we spent a few hundred bucks getting to the island, but then we could get on a boat really quickly from Athens to Santorini or Mykonos to Santorini. It was like 30 bucks and right. you could see more. So what are those opportunities that you can um, go to some place? We've been talking recently about this couple's trip that we might do with my best friend and her boyfriend. And he's like, oh, we should go to Portugal. and where? Morocco. Right. Because they're like pretty close by. So I think those are some things to consider. Mm-hmm. So now you mentioned not being able to do things last minute. And, you know, our, our friend here just walks up to counters and be like, yo, let me get your first flight he out. Said he used to. I mean, <laughs> well, you know, that didn't change. So <laughs> in the pandemic ish, like towards like when you could be vaccinated and start to travel, his mm-hmm. passport had expired, but he decided still to surprise me with a trip. And it was last minute. And I went, I went, it was my actual first solo trip. I went to Jamaica. Um, it was really cool. Um, but yeah, so I can, I can spur of the moment a little bit. I, I still had like two days notice. So two, three day notice. I can't just wake up and yeah, yeah we, go. we were sit, we were sitting on my couch and I was like, uh, surprise this weekend. You're going to Jamaica. Oh, you're going like by yeah, yourself. Yeah. yeah, it was great. It was it was like right on time. It was one of those moments where a bunch of stuff had happened at school. Yeah. I learned about one of my parents who was really, really ill and mm-hmm. his mom. And it was like his it's his, it was his primary parent. And so I was like, oh my gosh, what's my poor child going to do? Right. Like mom is really sick. Who can help? Um, so it came at a really good time because yeah. me- mentally I was exhausted at work just from all the things that had unfolded throughout the 18 months or so. Oh, wow. So I, I want to kind of dive in a little deeper. So buying tickets at the counter. Sounds like you got a little inside scoop on how to get at least reasonable price tickets because you're buying tickets at the counter. 
and then figuring out Airbnb either on the plane or when you land. How how does that work? Because, you know, we trying to figure that out. Right. (laughs) (laughs) So the best times to buy air air tickets are on. I don't I don't know why. uh, Tuesday and Wednesday mornings from 1 a.m. to 3 a.m. So mm-hmm. during that weird hour, where people usually get up to use the restroom on Tuesday or Wednesday is usually the best time to buy. You'll oftentimes see flight tickets that'll be anywhere from 50 to like $125 difference buying them that time of day, just because mm-hmm. of the, the sheer traffic of people looking to buy tickets online isn't it's high low. in that period of time. Okay. The other piece, and it's not every airline, but a good majority of them um, often are looking to still sell those tickets, but because they can't get all the seats filled, in many instances, the prices will end up being cheaper if it's a destination everybody's not trying to frequent, right? So if you go to the airport ticket counter and say, oh, I'm trying to go to um, Las Vegas, right? Everybody's trying to go to Las Vegas. Whereas you're saying, hey, uh, can, I, can I get your the next flight out to Omaha, Nebraska? But Omaha, Nebraska is actually beautiful with some phenomenal food, Mm -hmm. but not many people are going to Omaha unless you actually live in Omaha, Mm -hmm. right? So for me to get a last minute flight to go to Omaha is going to be a lot cheaper than it would if I would have done it online because it's Mm -hmm. trying to get seats filled. Mm -hmm. Nice, nice. Mm -hmm. Y'all hear this? Like, don't be, you ain't got to go to Las Vegas. You can go to Omaha, Nebraska, get some good steaks and just enjoy yourself. All right, that's what's up. So can y'all tell us if, if y'all on social media, where can people find you or y'all like kind of locked down in private? <laughs> um, it's, it goes a little bit back and forth. I mean, I'm at Gail Montini, but um, you won't see much because as I told you, <laughs> it's like, I'm, I may or may not post it. And if I it do, didn't it's happen. Like five years later. And you'd be like, was she in Greece this summer? No, she was there like five years ago. Okay. <laughs> I, don't blame you. I, I do the same thing. I do the same thing. Well, I definitely, we, we both thank you for doing this mm-hmm. and um, we appreciate you sharing um, your experience. Absolutely. Um, and, Absolutely. Anything, anything you want to leave the, 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 the viewers with? Travel related. Oh, actually, I have one thing to step back to. Um, you mentioned you have a son, right? Um, one of the things that a lot of people don't really, uh, younger people as they grow, don't really understand how do you travel with children. So mm. I know you guys had some baller trips. I've seen them. So <laughs> how does traveling with a young one look? Because my man was balling on these trips. He was. Uh, so that was actually his first. That was actually I'll let him answer because he also had a son. Um, but I took Langston to he's been several places within the United States, like California. We've been to San Diego, um, a bunch of different places, more places than I think I was at his age. But I recently took him to Jamaica, which would be the second place he's been. He went to like out of the country. He went to Aruba for my cousin's wedding. And then we took him to Jamaica. He had a really good time. I think the way to travel is to um, with a young child is to kind of like over plan. So it was my first time taking a snack suitcase. That is a tip. <laughs> that is a tip. <laughs> um, a snack suitcase. And I will, I swear to you, I will never travel again without a snack suitcase. We just I need that one. for me. I know <laughs> that's that was great for Lex. I now I that for me. With a snack suitcase, I put chips and candy, all the things that I like because I like to snack in the afternoon or in the evening. And sometimes the things you really like are not there. So <laughs> snack suitcase, fill it up with all the things that you enjoy. But that's what I did for him because he's a super picky eater. So I know that he'll want cereal in the morning. He'll want certain snacks. And I know that they're not accessible everywhere, nor am I going to go searching high and low for those goldfish that he likes. That's nonsense, but I will bring them. Um, so I'd say definitely plan that way. We looked for places that were kid friendly. So this place had a pool and a beach close by that we could walk to. I check out food options, seeing if there are food items that he would like. But he honestly is the (coughs) sweetest. (laughs) I mean, he's a little bit of me, but he is the sweetest and most agreeable child. And so on an airplane, if he has some, you know, some earphones, his tablet or something to watch, 
He sleeps a lot. He'll color. So he's pretty easygoing. Honestly, the snack suitcase was the hit because he's like, mom, this was the best idea ever. We should bring snacks everywhere. And I was like, don't worry, Langston. We will. And so when we've been to Costa Rica as adults, I was like, hey, everybody, I've got a list for the snack suitcase. What goes inside? And late night, it was so clutch. Jessica's like in bed eating Pringles is like, why have I ever traveled without a snack suitcase before? I don't know. Right. Why didn't we think of that? But it's because of you don't have a small child. But now, you know. All right. And yourself, sir? Uh, So my first solo trip outside of the country with my son was to Tokyo. Um, mm-hmm. when he's, he'll be 17 in a couple of days. I think it was for his spring break when he was like 11 or 12. Mm. He's always loved like, you know, anime and things of that nature. Oh. But for, for traveling with a child, similar to what Lena just called out, like, although I am super spontaneous and I'll just get up and go, like you cannot do that abroad with a child so like, we had itineraries we had agendas we had to be at places at particular times of the day the only difference is is like he is a very picky eater mm. so whereas i would try anything that i see being prepared on the street you know i ended up learning you know the Dom- the domino's pizza menu in japanese <laughs> every night before we went to bed we would have pizza from Domino's, pizza and wings from Domino's. <laughs> mm-hmm. And then we'd be randomly walking around downtown Tokyo. And then we find ourselves in line getting, you know, a, a number two value meal at McDonald's, right? <laughs> so he would, we would get out and explore, but then he still wanted to revert back to the things that he was, that he, he knew. knew. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. Um, but yeah, I would say definitely planning in advance and looking to create some sort of schedule for the child uh, is important. Um, and then outside of just snacks, like, you know, traveling with a child, you just got to make sure that they're always like staying hydrated, um, especially depending on the, the weather, make sure yeah. that, you know, there are accessible bathrooms in places. Cause you know, we'll pull over on the side of the road pretty easy in the U S but you may not necessarily be able to do that or be accepted trying to do that abroad. You might get arrested or get a ticket. So. Mm-hmm. Well, thank you both for once again jumping on here and sharing. Um, this was dope. I really appreciate you guys jumping on and sharing. And like I said, you guys are the first. So y'all set the bar pretty high for everybody. <laughs> <laughs> now, you know, take a drink if you're in danger after this episode. Uh, <laughs> in danger? These are the safest. He's not in danger. Why are oh. you taking a drink? Oh, I was just trying to, <laughs> to you know. Wait, wait, wait. <laughs> wait. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you very much.